In this video, we will build a tool to automatically summarize meetings. Let's take a look at the final result. We have a transcript where we have different speakers saying different things. It's a long list. And we can run our tool. We will build it in Python. And it will take a few seconds. And then it will automatically give us a summary of key results, of things people have said, of the current steps of the project and the meeting notes. We will build this tool using Gemma, Google's Open LLM, Olama and Python, but stay until the end of the video to see how you can translate this into every other platform as well. Hello and welcome to this video on how to build a tool that summarizes meetings automatically using the power of AI. Before we start, we want to quickly talk about the tech stack that we're using here. First up, we're using Python as a language and more broadly an ecosystem. It's very widely adopted in the industry, so using AI we have great support for the other tooling that we need. Speaking of other tooling, we want to run our tool locally and for that we're going to be using Olama. Olama is a tool that makes it really easy to run large language models locally on our devices. And luckily for us it has great support for Google's Gemma. Speaking of Gemma, it's a large language model introduced by Google which caught quite some press, I would say. We can think of it as sort of a Gemini Lite version that is open to use so we can install it on our machines and work with it locally for free. It comes in different forms and sizes. Specifically, there's a smaller model with 2 billion parameters and a larger one with 7 billion. Now you can already think that larger models have better performance overall, which is a very broad definition here. For our use case, the 2 billion parameter model is more than enough so we can save some memory and get a better performance with that. So we'll stick with that. But feel free to experiment with bigger models and also with models from other vendors. With this, the tech stack is pretty clear. So let's start by setting up the project. But before we do that, if you enjoy this video and the content that we produce, then please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. This helps us immensely. Now back to the video. Before we set up the Python project, we want to get Olama up and running. Luckily, this is very easy. So let's head over to the website and see how we can do that. You see the claim again, we can run models locally, which is great for us, and we can download and install Olama. I've already done that. And to see this, you can take a look at the status bar here and Olama is running. It has official support for macOS and Linux and Windows Preview is currently out. So if you're on a Windows machine, you can try out the developer preview or wait until the stable version is released. Now, after Olama is running, we still need to specify which model we want to use and run that. You can see there's a wide range of models such as Mistral, Orca, Llama 2. They have a lot of models available, but we already saw we want to use the Gamma model here and they are describing that quickly and you can see there are two models available and we will go with the Gamma 2B, so the 2 billion parameter size. We can already see the command how to run this locally and after installation we have access to the CLI. So let's just copy this and paste it in our terminal and run it. If you haven't installed the model yet, it will now download it and then start running it. For now, we can ask it a question such as why are llamas the best animals? And we can see a quality result here. Very diplomatic answer. Now we don't want to use the model inside of our terminal. So let's quit this again using control D. The model keeps running in the background so we can still access it from our application. So let's start building this up. In order to have a clean project structure, we want to use a virtual environment to install our packages in. 
to isolate the project from others on our machines. This will also come in handy if we ever want to deploy our project on a server, since we have all dependencies separated into one environment. Let's jump into the console to first create a virtual environment. We're gonna be using vnf for that. First, we use this command to use the vnf tool to create a virtual environment for us, and we call it summarizer. If we run this and take a look at the folder, we now see the there's a new directory called summarizer. This is just the name of the environment. You can also name it anything else. And we can now say we wanna source summarizer bin activate. And with that, we activate the environment. So we now have a clean Python installation running without any dependencies, but a clean slate. We see the indication here that the environment is active, so we don't accidentally forget to activate it when working with it. The only dependency that we will have is Olama. And I wanna to quickly touch upon that because if you go to the GitHub page of Olama, I'll add a link for that in the description, you can see there are a lot of community integrations to not only work on web and desktop, but also on the terminal. And we have a lot of libraries for different programming languages, such as Rust, Swift, and many more. So it's really a tool that we can use anywhere. And one of the best things is that they offer a REST API. And we will explore that at the end of the video, because with that, we can use any language we like and simply interact with Olama using their REST API. But let's take a look at that later. And for now, we want to install Olama. So let's do pip install Olama. Wait for it to finish. And now to see which dependencies we've installed, we can use pip freeze and put them into a requirements.txt file. The advantage here is, again, that we can easily create a new environment from that because we have all the dependencies we need inside of that text file. So let's fire up VS Code to continue. As we can see, we have the requirements.txt file. This has the Olama dependency and all sub-dependencies that it installed. And we have our virtual environment data here. The last step is that we create a new file. We call it main.py. We open it up, we close the sidebar and are ready to implement our little application. Before we continue with the implementation, we first need to think about how we are getting the transcription data of the meeting. Now this is gonna be very different across the SDKs or tools that you're using. So we've take a look at two different ones here. Using other tooling, the structure might differ again, but for now, let's take a look at these two. I have quietly copied two examples into the project. I will also add them to the GitHub repository, which I'll also link in the description of the video, so you can take a look at them and use them if you like. The first one is a transcription from the stream video SDK, and you can see it is a JSON array, uh, which has a type for everything that's set. It has a speaker ID with the name and then the text that was set, together with a start and a stop time. If you take a look at the other example called meeting transcript here, we only have the speaker name and the text that was said. So it might differ slightly, but what we want to do now is we want to take this array of JSON data and convert it into an array of strings of what people have said and turn that into a single string that we can then hand to our language model to process it. So let's do that. We open up main.py again, and one of the other reasons that we choose Python here is that it comes with a lot of handy tooling. In our case, for example, the JSON package, which makes it really easy to work with, well, JSON files. So we define a function called load conversation data. And first we open up the meeting transcript.json file to be able to work with it. And then we convert it using the JSON library. We define a lambda function to extract 
from each object the speaker as well as the text and put it into a single string. We then map over the entire file, so we take each JSON object of the array one by one, apply the lambda function to it, basically converting it into a single string. In the end we create a list out of this and we join every element of this list with a new line character, so in each line we have a new person saying whatever they've said. And finally we return the conversation string. And we can test if this works by simply calling this and printing out the result. We call python main.py and we can see we have the entire string with a new line whenever a new person is saying something. So clearly this extraction works. I want to emphasize again though that this can look very different depending on the data you have at hand. However, the tooling that Python offers makes it generally quite easy to convert the data that we have into something we can use and feed to our large language model. So with that, the data is pre-processed and we can continue. All the preparation and the pre-processing of the data is now done, so we're now ready to implement the conversation with the language model. Before we start, I want to quickly touch upon a very important topic, which is prompt engineering. In short, what prompt engineering is, is optimizing the way we talk to the AI to get the best results possible. There are a lot of good resources about prompt engineering and even a free course, and I will link all of them in the description of the video. But just so you know, we don't claim to have a perfect prompt here. It's definitely something that I encourage you to explore and play around with to get even better results. With that, let's jump back into the project and first we save the conversation data that we just parsed in a string. Next we create the prompt. You can read through the prompt here, but basically we tell the AI that we want to summarize the text that we give it in roughly 300 words. We tell it that the data is from a meeting between one or more people and we want to have the summary as an output and we want to have it as a free form text with a summary of what people have said and the action items coming out of it. Again, feel free to play around with that to get different results. The next step is the Olama integration. So first we import the package. Remember we've installed it earlier. And then we call the olama.chat function. We use the gamma2b model, which is running in the background using Olama. And the first message we hand to it is of the role system. So it's a system prompt and the content is gonna be the prompt we just defined. The second message it gets is a user message. So something we want it to react to. And we hand in the conversation string that we have. Finally, we we'll just print out the result. So we get a response and we take the message and the content of that. Awesome, so let's save this and see how the result looks. For this, we jump back to the terminal and run python main.py again. It will take a few moments to give us this result. It picked up that we wanted to have a summary of the meeting. We have bullet points that sum up what happened inside of the meeting and the most important action items. So it is exactly what we were hoping for. Awesome. Yeah! But hold on. Remember that I wanted to show you how to use the REST API instead of the Olama package to demonstrate that it's very easy to port this to other platforms, not using a built-in package. So let's jump back into the project and first we get rid of the code that uses the Olama package. We can even get rid of the import to demonstrate that nope, we're not using the package anymore. We can still have the prompt and the conversation string and continue from here. Now, while we don't need the Olama package, it's easier to use web requests using a small library. And in our case, we will use the requests library. So let's jump back into terminal really quick and do a pip install requests. And because we wanna have all the dependencies in the requirements.txt file, let's freeze that again and put that inside there in our code. We can now implement the library and now we need to communicate with the API. So let's quickly jump back into the browser to see again the documentation for the REST API. This is on the GitHub repo of Olama and you can see here it runs on 
port 11434 with a slash API slash generate. So we can use a post request here to add this data to the request and get a response back. So in our editor, we can start by defining a few things. Specifically, we define the endpoint. That's the one you just saw. And now we define a prompt that you want to put into the request. For this, we combine the prompt itself together with the conversation string that we have parsed. Now we can define the data that we want to send with the post request. Specifically, this is going to be which model to use, the prompt that we just defined, whether to use a streaming response or get it in one bit, and then how long to keep alive the request. With that, we can do requests.post to the Olama endpoint, and as JSON, we send the Olama data that we just defined. We will get a response back, similar to the response we got from the library we used before. And finally, we can print out the result, just as we did before. It just looks a little bit different. We need to extract the JSON and extract the response from it. Let's save, and let's see if the quality is still the same. We jump back into the terminal again, and simply run our program again. Again, it will take a few moments, but considering that it calls a large language model, the time is not that bad. You can see it looks a little bit different. It now has freeform text. There's no more bullet points, but overall the summary looks pretty good. We have all the important points covered, so I think the overall quality is still very good. In this video, we didn't write a lot of code. If you take a close look, in the end, we come out at 31 lines of code, which is not a lot. But at the same time, we have achieved quite a bit. We have a local language model up and running using Olama. We have pre-processed the transcription data we got from a meeting. And then we've handed this to a language model and gotten back a summary of the meeting in a very short time. We even discussed two different ways to request this data from Gamma. I think it's very fascinating that we can come up with a solution this quickly for a rather complex problem. It requires a lot of knowledge outside of coding, specifically things like data preprocessing, how LLMs work, and things like prompt engineering. With the tooling that we've used, we have a lot of room for experimentation. We can use different language models to see if the performance changes in any significant way. We can use different platforms, different languages to interact with the language models. And also, we can just embed this onto a server and integrate it into a real application, for example, using a webhook that calls our tool whenever the transcription of a meeting is finished. You see, there's a lot to play around with and come up with, and we're very curious to hear what you are gonna build with that. So definitely comment on this video and tell us what you want to build. But for now, thanks for watching. Feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate that and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.